4-4, using corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So the objective of this video is to use congruent and corresponding parts of congruent triangles to prove that two triangles are congruent. Alright, so with side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side, you know how to use three congruent parts of two triangles to show that the triangles are congruent. Once you know that two triangles are congruent, you can make conclusions about their other corresponding parts because, by definition, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So our focus question for this video is, what is useful about proving triangles are congruent? Now, using the corresponding parts of congruent triangles is, is you know, it's a long, a long phrase for something that's really pretty simple. What that means is this. Can we prove triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF? Well, we know this side is congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side, and by third angle theorem we can figure out that this side is 80 degrees. So yes, we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now, now that we know they're congruent, we can use corresponding parts of congruent triangles to now say that angle A, since it's congruent to angle D, we know that's 62 degrees. Since C is congruent to F, we know that's 38 degrees. And we also know, we don't know the length of AC or DF, but, we, but since we proved the triangle is congruent and these are corresponding sides, we know they're both congruent as well now. Same thing for here. We can use angle angle side to prove this triangle congruent to this triangle. Well, now that we know they're congruent by angle angle side, we know that this side's congruent to this side, we know that this side's congruent to this side, and we know that this angle is 62 degrees. All right. Now, since we know this triangle is congruent to this one and this one's congruent to this one, we can also use corresponding triangles and corresponding parts to say now that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle GHI. All right. So basically, what that means, and then you know, to, to to summarize this and wrap this up a little bit, what this means is once you use one of the four ways, angle side angle, well let's do them in order: side side side, side angle side angle side angle and angle angle side once you use one of those four ways to prove two triangles congruent all of their corresponding parts are now congruent okay because remember before in back in 4-1 we had to prove everything's congruent to everything well and then in 4-2 and 4-3 I showed you, well, you don't exactly need everything. You only need three certain parts. But once you use those three certain parts to prove the triangle is congruent, you can go back to unit one and say, well, since they're congruent, everything's congruent to everything. All right? So it's pretty simple. Here's a proof explaining that. Here we have two triangles. We want to prove KB congruent to AC. All right, so what we can do, you know, start out with our proof. This is a flow proof, okay? You can pick whatever proof you want. I don't, I don't really care what you use, but they use the flow proof here. So it's get, they, they wrote down our given statements, angle K, angle K, KBC is congruent to angle ACB, and angle K is congruent to A. That's given. Well, now by reflexive property, all right, because we can't prove this angle congruent to that one because angle, angle, angle does not prove congruence. You will learn later that that only proves similarity. Um, so we need another way to prove it. Well, we have two angles, two corresponding angles. Let's get a corresponding sign. Well, hey, BC is in both of them. So BC is congruent to BC by reflexive property. So these three statements together prove these two triangles congruent by angle, side, angle. Well, now that we know the triangles are congruent by angle side angle, we know all corresponding parts are congruent. So now, without even having to prove anything, we know that the that the last remaining angles are congruent anyway, not even having to use third angle theorem. 
All right, and we know since KC and BA are corresponding, we know they're congruent. And we also know that KB is congruent to CA because they're corresponding. So we used corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. You can simplify this by saying CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So instead of writing this out, if you just want to write CPCTC, go right ahead. All right, no need to write more than you have to. All right, now, so it's pretty simple. Okay, I think so anyway. Once you use one of the four methods to prove the triangle is congruent, as long as you have corresponding parts, they're congruent after that. Okay, so number one, it says given angle BA, I mean, sorry, side BA is congruent to side DA, and side CA is congruent to side EA, prove C congruent to E. So I want to make this you, you try, write me a short proof, you can pick any one of the three styles you want, write me a short proof, take a few seconds. Alright, so I'm a two column proof kind of guy. So let's, so we have our statements on this side and our reasons on this side. Should have probably used my line tool for that. Number one, remember you always start out with your given. BA is congruent to DA and CA is congruent to EA. And number one, of course, that is our given. Alright, so number two, now because we have side, 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 so let's let's try to do side angle side. Well, these are vertical angles, so we know by default vertical angles are congruent. So angle CAB is congruent to angle EAD. And our reason, vertical angles are congruent. And feel free to abbreviate like this in class. Vertical angles, that's the angle sign. Angles are congruent. That's the congruent sign. So now we have now we have proven side angle side. So for number three, we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADE. Three, our reason, side angle side. So now number four, we can say angle C is congruent to angle E. All right, we can say that as long as they're corresponding angles from between both triangles. So if we look, does C correspond to E? Yes, it does. So we can say that C is congruent to E by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CPCTC. All right, we don't have to try to use well, we can't use third angle theorem because we don't know what B and D are. But since we proved the triangles congruent, since they are basically the same angle in both triangles, so they're corresponding parts of the triangles, we can therefore say they are congruent just because we've proved them, we proved them the two triangles congruent by side angle side. All right, so we don't have to do any more work. Once we proved them congruent, boom, they're corresponding parts, therefore they're congruent. All right? I think this is a pretty easy lesson. Hopefully this video has been a little bit shorter. Remember that focus question we had at the beginning, what is useful about proving triangles are congruent? Well, once you know that two triangles are congruent, you can prove that every pair of corresponding parts in the triangles is congruent. Okay? That is why it is useful. That is what's useful about proving triangles congruent. Once you use one of the four ways, um, SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, once you use one of those four to prove them congruent, boom, everything, all the corresponding parts are congruent. You have, you don't have to do anything else. You can just say, yep, they correspond, they're congruent. Okay. Here is your ticket in the door. All right. Number one, Name the postulate theorem that you can use to show the triangles are congruent, then explain why the statement is congruent. So basically figure out why these are congruent, use one of the four methods to figure out why these are congruent, and then tell me why that's true. 
Same thing here. Use one of the four methods. Tell me why that's congruent and then tell me why that's true. Number three, how does the fact that corresponding points can relate to the definition of congruent triangles? Eh, I want to see what you'll come up with, so go ahead and do that. And then number four is a find the error. Find the error. All right, so read through the proof and see if you can find his or her. I don't know who did it. See if you can find the error in the proof. All right. So good luck. Make sure you have this ready to go for tomorrow when you come to class. See you tomorrow.